I'm going to show you how to make temper paint that is very easy to make. It has the same consistency as what normal temper paint has. You're going to measure out three cups of water and put it into a pan for it to boil. And while you are letting the water boil, you are going to go over and mix the dry ingredients. You're going to need two bowls because we're going to make two different colors at a time for the paints. What you're going to need to do is measure out one cup of flour in each bowl. In this one I already have one cup of flour. This one I actually have one cup now because they're a half cup measuring spoons. So one cup of flour in each bowl. Then you're going to measure out a fourth of a cup of salt. You just want to measure out a fourth of a cup and put it into both of your bowls. Then this is where the coloring comes in because you're going to choose your Kool-Aid flavor. Whatever flavor you decide is going to also be your coloring for your paint. In this bowl we're doing a lime green and in the other bowl we're going to be doing a moonberry it's a blue coloring. So you just go ahead and dump in your coloring for both bowls. And then you're going to take a spoon and you're going to just stir each one a little bit in. Stir them a little tiny bit and then we're going to add in our water. But before we add in our water, we have to do one thing. We have to wait for it to cool the water that is just at room temperature. You're going to add in three tablespoons of vegetable oil. And then just give it a little stir. Now obviously water and oil do not mix, but just to kind of a little time. Somebody once asked me why you had to boil the water and I said because of the fact that there's sediments in there and if you do not sometimes it just will not work properly. Then what you're going to want to do is measure out one and a half cups per bowl because you only need a cup and a half. So, oops. Go ahead and measure out cup and a half of your liquid and then you're going to add it to your mixture. Mix it real well with a wooden spoon first to get some of the lumps out and then afterward I'll take a whisk and go through there real well. Okay, Just to finish it off a little bit we'll take our whisk and whisk it up. Now the blue one was the one that I did first and that particular one has set already pretty well. So just make sure you have as many of those little pieces broke up as you can. Then we're going to go ahead and transfer our paints into some little jars. And all I do is just pour it right into my jar. If you have a funnel, it might work a little bit better. I try to make all of the primary type coloring first. So that way, if I have additional or the leftover paint, like this one, I have the blue, so I can mix the blue with the green. After the green sets up, I will do the green as well. And for me, I just use the canning jars because I find it easier that I can just put the cap on like so and then I have a nice little carrier that we use so after we're out of the paint we just uh, take and clean them out and this this way it's a nice little storage area so the blue is now done um, the green I believe is pretty much let's see how we're doing over here um, no it's thickening but it's not quite where we need it yet so I'm going to leave it for a little while and then I will transfer that one in a bit. 
I just transferred my green temper paint into its container and now what I'm going to do is mix the two colors that I made which was the blue and the green and I'm going to just mix them together. You can see that there's a nice thick consistency just like a temper paint so I'm going to go ahead and mix both colors now, together. I'd like to use some red food coloring because I really want red instead so I'm just going to use a little bit of food coloring in there. If you're not concerned about the smells then you can go ahead and just mix your colors together like I do. And that's how we make our temper paint.